Being an athlete that travels the world, it's important to remember that the things you do at home can get you into serious trouble abroad. Brittany Griner is learning this the hard way, as the U.S. tries desperately to liberate her from Russian prison. In this video, we talk about how Brittany Griner got herself into this mess and what the U.S. might be able to do to get her out. So why exactly is an American basketball player in Russian jail? While this story is back in the news, thanks to Griner's sentencing, this all actually began six months ago. In February this year, she was detained at the Sheremetyovo International Airport because vaporizer cartridges containing hash oil had been found in her luggage. While cannabis products are now legal for recreational use in many parts of the U.S., hers was medically prescribed. Unfortunately, Russia doesn't tolerate cannabis use under any circumstances. She spent six months in jail waiting for her trial, as the State Department of the United States scrambled to negotiate for her release. When her trial finally got underway in the first week of July, Griner immediately pled guilty to the charges of smuggling drugs into the country, but she insisted that it was an honest mistake. She had no intention of hurting anyone or causing any trouble and she didn't even realize that what she was doing was against the law. Did her admission get her any mercy from the court? Not really. The prosecution wanted her sentenced to 9.5 years in prison, and they ended up giving her nine years. That was all the clemency the Russian court had for her. Apparently, she's also been fined 1 million rubles, which were worth $16,301 at the time of this video. You might think that Brittany Griner couldn't have been the first athlete to skirt the law of a foreign country. Why is Russia being so harsh with her? The answer is sadly pretty simple. Griner's arrest was not the biggest news in Russia, in February, not by a long shot. Just a week after Griner was detained at the airport, Russia launched their invasion of Ukraine. That move has antagonized most of the world against Russia, but the Western world is more united than ever against Vladimir Putin's regime. We're not saying that Griner's arrest and this invasion are related events, but her arrival in the country had some great timing for them. But even before the Ukraine invasion, relations between Russia and the U.S. were at an all-time low. Russia was accused of rigging the 2016 presidential election in the U.S., and they were also suspected of carrying out cyber operations to sow division and chaos among the American people. On a more surface level, Russia has been meddling in Ukraine ever since Putin returned to the premiership in 2012. The big move in that story was their annexation of Crimea in 2014, which caused Russia to lose their seat at the table of international cooperation, along with some nasty sanctions. So while you'd expect most countries to treat foreign athletes like guests, Russia was probably keeping a close eye on any American transiting through their airports. Greiner isn't the only American in Russian prison, and U.S. negotiators have a tough battle ahead and bailing her out. Speaking of negotiations, what has the U.S. tried so far, and how far might they need to go? About the only way the U.S. can save Griner at this point is through a prisoner exchange. In their negotiations with the Russians, America wants them to give Griner and former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan in a package deal. In exchange, they're willing to give the Russians Victor Balt, a Russian arms dealer who has the cute nickname Merchant of Death. Russia wants more, though. A lot more. Along with Balt, Russia wants the U.S. to persuade Germany to release Vadim Kresikov. This guy is bad news, and he served a life sentence in Germany for assassinating Zelimkov Kangashvili, a Chechen soldier who served in the Georgian army and later became a counter-terrorist informant. Russian assassins have no chill or subtlety, and Krasikov shot Kangashvili in a park in Berlin. Is that something the U.S. is willing to do? It sounds unlikely. Krasikov is a German prisoner, which means the U.S. will have to convince one of their own allies to release a man who murdered someone on their own soil. You can imagine that Georgia hates this guy too, and the last thing they want is for an assassin of their asset to go free. The U.S. will definitely want to avoid damaging their relations in Eastern Europe while Russia is being so aggressive in that region. At some point, the Russians might ask the Americans to loosen their sanctions in exchange for their prisoners. That would put the U.S. in a very tough spot indeed, since they're supporting Ukraine in a major way and they don't want to stop, so sanctions are off the table. In other words, the U.S. isn't willing to offer Russia anything they want, and thanks to the already hefty sanctions, they don't have anything to threaten the Russians with either. As much as it sucks, Griner might have to settle down in Russian prison for a little while. In other news, a brief history of U.S.-Russian relations. The Brittany Griner looks like a saga, but it's just an episode in the long story of diplomatic relations between the United States and Russia. We figured that it might be worth taking a quick history lesson to freshen up on why these two countries hate each other to the point that innocent people get caught in a crossfire. Before the country known as the Federation of Russia was even born, America had been in a diplomatic wrestling match with the Soviet Union. In the aftermath of the Second World War, the U.S. and USSR had emerged as global superpowers, and the decades that followed would see their Earth-sized chess match shaped the future of the world. The endurance contest of the Cold War ended with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Ironically, they had pretty good relations with the U.S. at the time, thanks to Gorbachev's policies of glasnost and perestroika, the very policies that ultimately killed the USSR. When Boris Yeltsin took the reins of the newly formed Russian Federation, he too had relatively warm relations with the U.S. That all changed when NATO decided to intervene in the 1995 Kosovo War by bombing the aggressors, Yugoslavia. Most of you would probably agree that NATO did the right thing and stopped 
engulfing the Yugoslavian genocide of the Serbs, but many countries were annoyed by the fact that NATO didn't gain the approval of the United Nations Security Council first. The reasons why NATO skipped that step was because they expected to be vetoed by China and Russia, and that put a mortal fear of NATO into Russia. After all, NATO had proven themselves to be a powerful military alliance that can't be controlled by anyone from the outside and can get away with anything. Yeltsin was eventually succeeded by Vladimir Putin, an ex-KGB officer who hasn't been shy about his imperialistic goals. Experts believe that messing with Georgia and Ukraine is part of Putin's long-term vision of reuniting the Russian Empire or the Soviet Union. As long as NATO exists, it's not likely that the US and Russia will ever get along, and so their dance continues long after the Cold War came to an end. But one American who has already won over some Russians is Brittany Griner. According to Griner's lawyer in Russia, she's actually pretty beloved already by the prison guards and prisoners she's been spending the last six months with. As she went to her trial, her new friends reassured her that everything was going to be okay. Alas, they were pretty wrong about that. Our takeaway from this should be that Griner is a pure soul who deserves better than to lose nine years of her life because she was caught with cannabis oil in Russia when the country needed a political pawn. And finally, this isn't the right time to feel bad for Joe Biden, but we can't help it. Biden has had a difficult time as president, and the Brittany Griner case is yet another one that will probably define his legacy as president, or even as a politician. No one can accuse him of not taking this matter seriously, but all he has in front of him are bad choices. If he lets Griner stay in prison, he's leaving an American behind. If he swaps prisoners with Russia, he's rewarding their practice of taking hostages and encouraging them to do it more. If he loosens up sanctions, he'll be prioritizing a few Americans over the global need to curb Russian expansionism. It doesn't help that the ball is firmly in Putin's court right now. While he might have some interest in getting back intelligence and military assets in a prisoner swap, the fact that he's only asking about them now shows that he isn't overly concerned with them. Meanwhile, Biden is facing pressure from all sides at home. Being a president is tough stuff. We don't know why American politicians want this job so badly. Just reading about what presidents deal with is giving us anxiety enough. That's it for today's video. We're sending out all our love and hope to Brittany Griner, her family, and friends, as well as everyone else that's falsely imprisoned by Russia or under an unjust Russian invasion. Thanks for watching today's video, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.